The recipe today is from Hannah Glass's classic art of cookery right there in the mid 18th century. It's going to be a good one. It's a jugged hare. Thanks for joining us today. So there has been a lot of chatter on the, uh, in the comment section of the videos about, uh, well, let's just say that Paul McKenzie has been asking for rabbit or squirrel for, well, about half a year, over and over in every episode, and uh, you're going to get some rabbit today. Uh, this, uh, this recipe is a jugged hare. Now, obviously, we're in North America. We really don't have too many hares hopping around, but we do have uh, the closest Thing that we have available to us, which is a rabbit. And many times in the 18th century cookbooks, they talk about adapting hair recipes to a simple rabbit dish here. And so we're going to be using a rabbit to do a very, well, let's say a slightly adapted jugged hair recipe. Uh, Hannah Glass goes into some uh, depth about the jugged hair. It is one of those sort of classic uh, hand of glass recipes that gets talked about a lot and jugged hair recipes do sort of start popping up in English cookbooks in the early 18th century probably coming over from from France this idea of cooking a rabbit or a hare like this and these recipes continues to show up in uh, cookbooks in the 19th century even some in the early 20th century although I don't think very many people were actually cooking it by then. Let's get started. So this recipe starts out very, very simply. She says, cut it into little pieces. Now I'm going to admit to you right here that I am not an expert in cutting up rabbits into pieces. And this rabbit, uh, obviously it's already been sort of dressed out. I don't have to worry about what's going on gut wise or anything. I just need to break it up into pieces. So I'm going to uh, remove the legs in pieces. Now, this rabbit is um, missing a lot of what they would have had in an 18th century hare or rabbit. Um, we don't have any of the, we don't have the liver, which shows up in a lot of the recipes. They, they want to use that liver. Um, they don't, obviously this rabbit doesn't have its head, which is another uh, part that you see used a lot in these recipes. So our rabbit's all cut up into pieces here. The next step of this particular recipe talks about larding. She says you can lard this with little bits of bacon. And we kind of have to remember what we're working with here. This is a rabbit um, and it's a domestic rabbit at that. She was probably referencing hair. Of course, it's a jugged hare. And uh, both hare and rabbit are not known for having a lot of fat on their bodies. And that's why she's calling for larding here to add more, say, oil to this situation. And larding in a hare, I'm not sure exactly how it would have been done, but larding has to do with injecting or putting in pieces of fat to the meat. And you, do, you would do that to particular kinds of cuts that don't have a lot of fat on their own. So you see them larding beef, you might see them larding venison, um, and in this case, uh, rabbit or hare. Because this one is a, a domestic animal and it's a, it's a rabbit, I don't think we're going to need to lard it. So we're, we're going to skip that step for now. So now it's time to put the meat into our cooking vessel. Now, it's called a jugged hare for a reason. They would have used something like well, something they called a jug, which is a lot like a pitcher, a very large open mouth uh, vessel, um, a ceramic one at that. And we, what we're going to be using is one of our cooking pots. Now, the, our pot, our jug, as it were, has to be able to fit into a larger vessel. So that's something we have to understand when we're going to be doing one of these jug tears. Um, but we're going to use this cooking pot because we need to seal up the top it's going to be easier to seal this. It's got a lid already built into it rather than sealing up something like this pitcher, which we could use as well. She says to uh, put the pieces in our pot and we have to put in some spices. It looks good. Our pot's about two thirds full or so. Uh, she says call, it calls for a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. Uh, she says a blade or two of mace. I don't have any mace on hand right this second. So I'm going to put in the best uh, substitute, which is uh, nutmeg. Some of the other recipes you will find nutmeg going into the hare um, or rabbit recipes. We've also got an onion with cloves in it. Onion spiked with cloves. 
Now you may say, okay, onions spiked with cloves, very common way of uh, spicing this to get clove into it without leaving the clove. The nice part about having the, the onion with the clove in it is that it's very easy to remove. Um, and you don't have to worry about picking all those cloves out. They'll all stay right there in that onion. It's a nice way to, uh, to spice it that way. We need some sweet herbs to go along with this. This is thyme and some marjoram that we're gonna tuck into the pot. We need to seal this up so the liquids can't disappear. So I've got some real soft paste. This is just flour and water. And I'm gonna place it around the very outside edge of our pot. Uh, if we were using something like the pitcher, we might have sealed this up with um, a membrane, like a, a piece of bladder or even a piece of leather and cloth and tied that off to seal it up. With this particular one, because we have the lid, we can seal it up with the paste. Okay, we've got a pot of water here. You can get it warm or hot. Uh, really, it probably should be boiling. The problem is when you've got a boiling hot of a pot of water, it's hard to get what you want to get cooked um, without cooking yourself at the right at the same time, right? Um, so what I actually did was I, I did a two-fold thing here. I tied the lid onto this pot just in case to hold it down tight. And at the same time, with that little bit of rope and cordage, I actually made a, uh, a little handle so I can easily put this into the pot and take it out of the pot without burning myself. And that, that's gonna make it a lot easier. So uh, in our, our pot goes, we wanna make sure that there's a, enough water, but we wanna make sure this is sealed. You probably don't wanna have water obviously coming up over the top of your pot because it'll, it'll get through that seal that we've put on there. That dough seal is only just gonna work so well. Uh, and of course, when we've got boiling water, we've got some, uh, some movement in the water. So we don't want it to be totally all the way up to the side, but you want the water to at least come two thirds of the way up. Now, uh, once this is in its water bath, we can get it to boiling and it's supposed to boil for approximately three hours. Well, I've let this cool down enough that I can handle it. Uh, it's time to open this up and see uh, how it turned out. Let me just kind of peel this little rope thing off. That was kind of a trick there to get it so that it was tight enough that it didn't pop off when you were lifting it out, but you could still get it off. Um, it looks like it's sealed up nicely. <laughs> Hopefully we can get this lid off. There we go, perfect. Wow, the smell is wonderful, amazing uh, in this, uh, well, doesn't look too beautiful yet, but uh, certainly uh, the smell is wonderful. Now, uh, the recipe actually calls for removing the onion. We're gonna take out our sweet herbs too. We'll go ahead and serve this up. She says, just uh, basically plate this and serve it up to the table hot. Well, uh, now it's time to find out just how this one turns out. It's been quite a while since I've had rabbit, so uh, let's find out. Well, wonderful uh, herby flavor. This is a, a domestic rabbit, so it's not gamey at all. In fact, it's very much like chicken, um, probably a little tougher than a standard chicken. And, you know, I might have done a little bit of larding on this to get a little bit more oils to it. Again, this is some, it's a, you know, can be drier because it doesn't have a lot of oils based in the, in the meat itself. So I can see why, you know, she might call for that. So, you know, if I was gonna keep tweaking this recipe, I'd probably play around with putting a little bit of larding in this, uh, but well, turned out wonderful. S smells wonderful. The taste is wonderful. It definitely softened up what can be a tough meat if you don't cook it properly. Mm. I want to thank you for coming along um, and uh, supporting us in what we do, watching and, you know, all the thumbs ups and comments. It is so wonderful to see all the interaction there. Uh, thank you so much for all you do. And thanks for coming along as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century.